So getting to the heart of what trauma bonding actually feels like and what you can actually do to help yourself while you're feeling this horrible state of trauma bonding can be difficult to talk about, right? It can be kind of like this, this place you feel like you're out of your mind trying to understand what's going on. And yet, even if you understand, it's not making it go away. It's not making it any better. And so how do you get through this? How do you get through this trauma bonding? even with all the understanding and awareness you can have and how do you get your heart in sync with your head so that you can move through this process and start healing from toxic relationships i'm lise colucci and i am here to help you understand everything there is to know about toxic relationships healing from toxic relationships and transforming your life afterwards so let's get started talking about trauma bonds right now okay so i have lots of videos on here explaining what trauma bonding is and i will link them in this video at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that if you don't know what's going on with trauma bonding or if you need a refresher or anything like that. So we're just gonna talk about what it's like when you're in it. When you are trauma bonded, no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how emotionally intelligent you are, no matter how much you think you know yourself, right? It can feel like a confusing mess of emotions because you know better, okay? Your logic is like, that person is super toxic for me. That person hurt me. That person destroyed my life. And yet I miss them so much. I can't live without them. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, and the emotions are so gripping, right? The, the emotional state you're in when you're trauma bonded, when you look back on it, you're thinking, wow, I don't ever want to be there again. I don't ever want that to happen again. What the heck was that? Right? So this isn't something that is easy to explain to anyone who's never been there because people logically say, well, they were toxic for you. What are you worried about? Why are you upset about it? Just leave, right? Just get over it. Just stop thinking about them. It's not that easy, is it? It's not a simple matter. And in fact, this can be something that is very useful to have someone to talk to who does understand it. So I'm just going to say right here that if you do need that, coaching is available you can check out the information in the description of every video. I have coaching and I have group coaching and both of those can be an excellent resource. Whether you use my coaching or find someone else, it can be a benefit to your life, you guys, to have someone that gets it, that knows how to help walk you through it and support you. Okay, so how can you help yourself? How can you start getting through this trauma bonding, this feeling of cognitive dissonance where your mind knows one thing and your heart is saying something else and they are not agreeing and your heart starts winning and then your head starts winning and then your head judges you for what you did that your heart told you to do and wow, right? Okay, so it can be important to recognize that this is going on, to recognize that this is going to be uncomfortable, that this is not gonna be an easy process, maybe for you right now, okay? As you start healing, it gets easier and easier. You may have a, you know, a bumpy road and a whole lot of twists and turns to get there, but once you get through this and once you are outside of the trauma bonding, the healing changes and it becomes a more self-focused journey rather than a narcissist-focused journey, okay? So for right now, if you're trauma bonded, just understand that's where you are. Understand that a lot of it has to do with brain chemistry and a lot of it has to do with sort of like an addictive cycle toward that narcissistic person. You get used to them being the source of relief from pain because they have spent the relationship creating pain and then being the relief from pain. And so your brain has the chemistry and the neural pathways and all of that to think that that's what's supposed to happen. And right now, because of the lack of contact with them, most likely if you are no contact, it's building and building toward this, please give me relief feeling. Okay. They aren't the answer. They aren't the source of your happiness. They are the source of more of this, more drama, more trauma, and more of a terrible existence with them interacting. So know that, okay? Know that the, the way through it is sometimes not the easiest way, but here we go. So resist the urge to reach out to them. This is why it's important to have support. This is why it can be important to reach out to someone for help. You guys, this channel can help you 
by watching the videos, by participating in the live streams, it, 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 participating in the video comments. I'm happy to respond to you if you're going through this and to try and talk you through a little bit to help you feel like you have someone to talk to, okay? So if that's something you need, please be sure to hit subscribe and the thumbs up because then I know which content you want, right? <laughs> and then I know that you're out there and I can, I can try and help you, okay? So, so aside from that, no contact. Why do we go no contact? We go no contact for ourselves. We don't go no contact to punish the other person. At this point, we're done dealing with the other person, right? We are no longer in the relationship. Okay, so the no contact is there to help you focus on your life and let this trauma bonding process end, okay? Getting you through up and over that horrible hill of all of this brain chemistry that's going on and all of the emotional pull toward that toxic person from the cognitive dissonance, okay? So no contact helps a lot of people, okay? That includes no looking at their social media content, no checking in with their family, no checking up on them, no following them, no asking about them, no listening to stories about them. It includes every piece of contact or bits of information, every trinket you have in your house that came from them, everything. It includes eliminating it. It is an addictive process in the same way that other addictions are, where if you're exposed to it, you're going to feel the urge for it. So it's kind of important to break that. It's different in that once it breaks, it's not like the addiction is there forever, right? It's more like you've got to get through it and let your brain have a break and let your emotions have a break and then start the healing process afterwards so that you can learn that you deserve much better than this in your life and that you can learn to keep it these toxic people out of your life. All right, so another thing to do is to change your focus. So if, if you're really wanting to text them right now, <laughs> right, and you're really wanting to reach out and like just see if they're there, call and hang up, whatever it is, <clears throat> resist it. Please do yourself a favor, put your phone away. Put your phone away. Get it out of your hands, okay? Or turn it off for a while. Let the feeling be there and then let it subside, okay? And if it's not subsiding, reach out and talk to someone for help, get in a support groups. So in the main description of every video, there are links to support groups as well. So check that out if you need it. Okay, doing that piece, that's one thing. Now what? Okay, so you've put your phone down and you're pacing the floor and you're like ready to pull your hair out. You're sobbing and you're feeling the horrible anxiety and stress. Okay, it's time to, time to settle down inside yourself and give yourself a conversation of support and validation from the inside, from yourself. Part of the process of healing from toxic relationships for a lot of people is learning to have a better relationship with self, okay? So tell yourself what you need to hear. Yes, it's painful right now. This is really hard, I know, I'm here, right? Be there for yourself. Tell your mind, Yes, I know it, this has been a cycle and you're right. And we're trying to listen to you. We're trying to stay away from that toxic person. I'm trying to, right? <laughs> I'm saying we because, well, it doesn't matter. Okay. And I'm trying to stay away from that toxic person. So validating yourself in real ways, not in the artificial way of telling yourself something you're not going to believe anyway right? In real, genuine ways for yourself, fill yourself with the information that you are lacking so that you have someone to support you. You are the foundation of your healing. And understanding that and really diving into that can really help you speed this up. And so knowing something's not going to be easy and doing it anyway, that's not fun. Self-care, okay? When you are in this part of the process where you are feeling so trauma bonded and so just awful all the time, self-care is super important. And that can mean backing it way up to the basics. Did you shower? Did you get out of bed? Did you, you know, whatever it is you do, brush your teeth, eat your food, basic stuff. And when you did those things, were you kind to yourself through it? Inner kindness towards yourself. I know it's difficult right now for a lot of people, is an important part of this healing. You've just had someone devalue you, devalue you, your worth, who you are as a human being, who you, who you are. Someone that says they love you and then devalues you. 
what the heck is that, right? That, that teaches us something's wrong with me, right? But there isn't anything wrong with you. The only thing that was wrong was the situation, was the person you were with being toxic and treating you and your emotions and your actual self of who you are poorly, horribly. Okay, that's what was wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. So you treating yourself the way you deserve to be treated, even in tiny little increments through the day, is super useful. Letting go of the judgment of self during this process is important. This isn't the time for self-criticism and self-judgment. There is nothing you could have done to change the way that narcissistic person sees the world and treats people. Nothing. This is the cycle of how narcissistic relationships work. They love bomb, they devalue, they discard. Okay, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's like that cut and dry. It comes and goes in fragments and it is confusing and twisted and sometimes they don't wanna let you go and you have to be the one to leave. But the thing is they sometimes discard you in the relationship so they completely check out from it and then they re-engage with love bombing like a Hoover. This is the cycle. Okay, they do not love from a genuine place deep inside themselves of giving toward another person, of the simple act of love. They don't love that way. They love transactionally, you guys. They love because of what it gets them, period. So you, it could never have been okay with them because they are not relationship material, all right? They are self oriented. That is it. So don't beat yourself up for either not seeing it, for not being enough of anything pretty, smart, handsome, whatever. You are, okay? You are those things. You're not not enough. You are exactly who you're meant to be and you're perfect as you are, as imperfect as you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't let them define who you are right now. It's not true. The things that they've been telling you, the way they've been breaking you down, that's that's a them thing. This isn't a you thing and they've made it a you thing because you took it on doing your very best just to make a relationship okay. Okay, so that's a whole lot going on. Take a break from that. Be kind to yourself. Stop judging yourself. You catch judgment, say, ah, oh, there's judging again and just go on shift, do something else. It's not worth listening to. It's more negativity and more toxic coming from your own mind because of what's been planted there. And that's not somewhere we need to be right now. Right now is the time of healing. So doing these things, taking these steps, very simply walking through your day, doing one thing after the next, right? One foot, one step at a time throughout your day to help yourself get through this process. This can take time sometimes, and that's just what it takes. This requires compassion, especially self-compassion. So let's work on being kind to, ones, to ourselves today, okay? If you're trauma bonded right now, or if you're struggling with self-esteem and self-worth, let me know in the comments what's going on for you and let's talk some more. Let's keep talking about this topic and, and hopefully I can get the information out there to the people who are needing it right now share this if you think it would help someone and you guys join me in the live streams join me here on this channel by subscribing and hitting the thumbs up and again reach out if you need it for coaching or group coaching information in the main description of every video as well as peer support information so you guys take care and i'll see you next time bye bye